Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, depending on where you're connecting from. Uh, welcome to yet another Citrix Ready uh, technical webinar uh, in our webinar series where we showcase how Citrix uh, and our partners like SAS Pass have integrated uh, to deliver valuable products and solutions uh, to common pro problems faced by our customers. Uh, I'm Anil Kumar, your host today. Uh, I'm a part of uh, the Citrix Ready technical marketing team uh, managing the network ecosystem partners. Uh, I've been with Citrix for uh, close to three years now, uh, and, and prior to Citrix, I've worked with uh, uh, companies like Fujitsu and HP, uh, where, where I had the opportunity to manage uh, some, some medium to large scale uh, Citrix environments. Uh, so, uh, so we have uh, SaaS Pass with us today. Uh, they have a really excite, exciting IAM product. Uh, and we'll see how they secure uh, and enhance uh, Citrix experience. And and to uh, and to to provide more details, uh, we have our main speaker today, uh, Fatih. Uh, hi, Fatih. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome to the webinar. Uh, could you introduce a little bit about yourself, please? Sure. Um, thanks for that introduction, Anil. Um, so uh, my name is Fadi Karatas, and I am head of product at SaaSPath. Um, I was one of the co-founders of the company. I came uh, previous to SaaSPath. I spent uh, quite a number of years um, at UBS and uh, was primarily in the financial services industry uh, um, for, for my whole career. And really uh, came together with my co-founders to address problems that we were facing in our daily lives, um, where we were dealing with um, multiple point solutions, and we just felt that there was a better way to do IAM, uh, bringing together what typically took a number of different solutions to cobble together into a single streamlined uh, product. And that was essentially the genesis of that path. All right. Right, great initiative, uh, Fatih, and, and, and uh, a really exciting product uh, from my personal experience. Uh, Fatih, could you, you. <laughs> uh, move to the second slide, please? Yep. So uh, before I hand it over to Fatih to kind of uh, uh, take you through the journey of SaaS Pass and, and uh, how it integrates with Citrix and, uh, and 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 how it enhances the end user experience. I just wanted to uh, uh, give a little bit of introduction about Citrix Ready and and what we do here. Uh, Citrix Ready is a uh, technology partner program. Uh, we we work with about uh, 1,200 partners with over 30,000 Citrix Ready products and and Citrix Ready marketplace. So so what we really do is uh, we showcase and recommend. Uh, third-party products, solutions, and services that uh, demonstrate uh, compatibility with Citrix's products. Uh, so, so what this means to the customers is that uh, it's it's the Citrix Ready marketplace is is, is that one-stop shop uh, where customers can uh, find solutions that are uh, trusted and and recommended by Citrix. So, so if you're if you're interested to more uh, know more about our program, or or if you're a third-party vendor, and and want to join Citrix Ready, uh, you could you could see the links there. You could uh, you, you could you could uh, easily browse to them and and get more details on it. So, uh, with without any further ado, let me uh, let me hand it over to uh, Fatih. Uh, we we are really proud to have uh, SaaS Pass here with us today. And uh, uh, just one housekeeping item to keep in mind, if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, please, please use the uh, go to webinar control panel uh, on, on your right hand side and, and post your questions and, and we'll answer them uh, at the end of the session. All right, so uh, Fatih, it's, it's all yours. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you Anil. Um, so about SaaS Pass, we were established in 2013. We currently have 42 employees and growing. Um, we're based in San Francisco, and as I mentioned, our mission really is to streamline and make identity as seamless as possible 
while providing the highest levels of security available um, seamlessly in the background. And, and uh, I guess as part of that whole mission, it's to essentially eliminate passwords as we know them today. Um, so why SASPass? Um, it, it, it's really because, again, as I mentioned, part of our mission is we wanted to bring together all of that strong security, but to have it packaged together into a very convenient, um, seamless product that enabled you to do all of the different parts of IAM that you typically use multiple products to do. So it has integrated MFA, single sign-on, it's got password management, endpoint access control, and even physical access control, giving you the ability to combine what today is typically done, sometimes by totally different departments, um, into the same platform where you don't have situations where someone might leave the company, they get um, taken out of the IT systems, but they might have had a second badge or, or a spare badge that they used to access the building, and that badge could potentially still remain active because it's a different department, it's not automated, um, and additionally, it's not necessarily as secure. So the typical physical access badge that one uses today uses purely static information, which is very easy to do. The same kind of replay attacks we're familiar with in the digital world, they're also possible in the physical world where if someone wants to compromise your physical facilities, all they have to do is wait for employees to leave at the end of a day and you know follow somebody on their way to their car or to the a train station or something like that. And uh, with equipment that is today less than $1,000, someone could literally clone your badge without you even knowing it because the security on them is substantially compromised. It's been compromised for years, but now the technology to compromise it, you know, from a distance of say four or five feet is so cheap that, um, that we could potentially start seeing more, uh, widespread exploits of these kinds in the, in the near future, uh, before it required a degree of technical knowledge that wasn't very widely available. But, um, you know, with the equipment available now, uh, it could start becoming very easy. Bring the same kind of multi-factor authentication type security with dynamic keys uh, to the physical world as well. At the same time, making things more convenient by eliminating badges um, and simplifying uh, that whole process of provisioning uh, new employees. Um, so, what what we provide is uh, improved and increased access to company applications. Uh, we have more than 1,500 ready-built SAML integrations, which right now uh, puts us essentially in a market-leading position in terms of the number of applications we support with that protocol, which also allows um, user provisioning. Uh, so when you have a new user join an, an application uh, that supports it is uh, available for provisioning, um, you can just add them in your uh, HR system, uh, have it synchronized with us or your active directory, et cetera. And whatever user accounts for whatever applications that person should have access to can get created automatically. And then when you deprovision, of course, um, their access gets cut off instantly. Um, aside from uh, the Citrix products, uh, the Citrix family of, you know, Netscaler, Sharefile, the Zen product family, uh, we support um, all of all of the top cloud apps you may be familiar with. Um, just some of them are listed over here. Um, these are a list of some of the more popular ones we see across our user base, which is why we have them listed. Um, so we additionally combine that um, enterprise identity and access management or uh, cloud apps with form-based login to more than 50,000 websites for websites that don't support that form of authentication that are still just username, password, or even if they have the ability to support authenticators, we can do something quite unique, which is to share those authenticator key generators across multiple users. So, you know, you might have a corporate Twitter account or a corporate Facebook account or some other form of social media um, that a marketing team would say five people needs access to but the way you typically would have to do it today is to share um, to share those passwords and to disable two-step verification 
because it's difficult to share that across five people, we can actually enable the sharing of it. Um, and then aside from that, um, of course, you can you can share uh, your applications if needed with another user when necessary. If someone's out and uh, you know someone else on their team needs access to their account, etc., uh, it's possible to share it. Um, the computer login protection we provide is fully integrated into the sign-in process for where. Uh, whether it's a Mac or, or a Windows machine, um, the MFA at sign-in is part of the login mask. And one thing that's very important and very unique with what we do compared to um, all of the other SaaS IAM providers that you might come across is that we are able to support the use of dynamic keys even when the machines are offline and not connected to any network. And it's quite relevant because if you read deeply into some of the standards, such as DFARS or PCI DSS 3.2, et cetera, um, one of the requirements is that you maintain MFA in all states for sensitive machines uh, and not just whether they're connected or not connected. Um, so even if you have a walled off uh, environment, um, you, you would still need to make sure those machines can, um, can be authenticated to with MFA uh, that is strong authentication uh, in both states. And also to be able to support, um, you know, traditional methods you might use to give support or maintain machines such as RDP, et cetera. And, and we can, and you can do this across both domain and non-domain controlled machines. So even machines that are set up as local machines, which for a variety of reasons, some of you, uh, I'm sure, have those in your environment. Um, and typically, difficult for you to centrally uh, require things like MFA on them, um, you you can actually do that uh, with SASPass to essentially import them into your SASPass admin console and then manage the user access through that. Um, and as I did mention earlier, uh, things like physical access and control systems, um, IoT devices using our APIs uh, and available um, ready code, uh, snippets in a number of different coding languages are all available to potentially be integrated into your own application. At the same time, uh, it can be used for customer identity. Uh, if you have end user customers that sign into uh, your product, you can enable essentially the easiest to use strong authentication out there uh, for those customers, um, especially if, if you're dealing with sensitive industries such as HIPAA compliance or uh, you have customers in uh, industries where they are highly regulated and, and need to have that kind of uh, strong authentication to their account. Um, and, and you can do this, you know, not just in web apps, but incorporate it into your mobile apps um, and into mobile browsers, et cetera, as well. Um, so in terms of how SASPass handles data and you might have concerns about what happens to it and who has access to data that's in your SASPass app. Um, SASPass is siloed and splits the information in the app into the company information. But one thing that we have in SASPass that's also very unique is that for personal use, SASPass is free and it can be used in the same app. Um, and our reasoning for that and why we believe it's it's very critical is if you look at company breaches and enterprise breaches, um, more than 80% are tracked down to credential breaches of employees. And typically it's from poor security habits of your employees where they will reuse passwords, recycle them across different, um, different sites, and they may use the same password for your company as or a variation thereof, um, you know, adding one on the end, an exclamation mark, et cetera, um, as they might have used to sign up for the Sony PlayStation Network for their kid or something like that. And because of that, when a site like that gets breached and people run brute force attacks to extrapolate what the passwords were, um, they can very quickly figure out where that person works, even from their personal email through things like LinkedIn, et cetera. And then if your uh, target 
that is worthy in their mind of exploiting, uh, that information becomes valuable to some of the bad guys, and they can typically breach uh, some of your defenses that way. So our our reasoning was that if you can give your employees a way for them to enhance their personal security, especially as people are becoming more and more concerned, there are apps out there that do personal password management for $30, $40 a year. We're bundling that in essentially in the SaaS app for, for free. And that's something that once people are aware of that benefit, it also encourages them to buy into it. But at the same time, you're actually extending your, your enterprise perimeter. So you're, you're doing a benefit for your own company. But at the same time, it's portable, it's free. And even if they leave your company, they can continue using it. It's very easy for you to deep provision them and remove them from the app um, instantly. Um, so you just revoke the permissions that are in their app, but you don't necessarily have, you don't have to delete their app remotely. You don't have to use an MDM tool to wipe the SaaS Pass app from their phone, et cetera. So uh, it, we, we believe that's, that's a very unique um, feature that uh, from all the feedback we've gotten up until now, um, customers are very happy with, with the feedback they're getting from their employees. Um, so the company data is stored in its own sa sandbox. We store every company essentially has its own partition. Uh, it's encrypted with company certificates that are generated when a new company gets registered on SaaSPath. And we have no access uh, to those company consoles. Um, so, you know, we do recommend that if you do test it out or try it and actually move into production, that you have uh, sufficient um, people in terms of admins who have access to your console or that you have duplicated your SaaS Pass app onto a backup device such as an iPad or another tablet, a secondary phone, et cetera, which is a feature we have and is, is also included free um, because we have had cases where a customer has, um, has basically um, lost that access and there's literally nothing we can do um, a, except for ask them to start over and uh, you know so it's uh, it's something we do recommend that you make sure you have measures in place all data that gets transmitted um, between SAS pass and and the apps uh, is is always encrypted uh, we use enterprise grade standards um, and you know we're not able to decrypt any of that data um, without essentially the certificate that runs lives on your device or the codes that uh, can unlock uh, those if you're using some of the hard tokens or u2f etc um, the pin code for the devices is never stored anywhere um, it's not on the device it's very similar to what happens when you restart your phone uh, even if you have things like touch id enabled you will have to enter your pin code because that's what's used to decrypt it in the same manner the SAS pass pin code um, will decrypt the app. It does not live on the on the phone keychain. So some of the exploits that are out there where phones can be plugged into a box and they get unlocked uh, due to vulnerabilities in the OS uh, and where even the keychain gets exposed, SAS pass would not be vulnerable to that, that like, because there, the pin code does not live anywhere on the keychain. Um, and again, by the same token, we have no access to it. We can't reset it. We can't do anything. Uh, users have a number of options, and of course, enterprises do as well with regard to how they can deal with those situations. Um, the complexity uh, reduction is quite significant when you look at all the different features uh, that one typically needs to use for identity and access management um, and the number of tools that are typically used today are easily anywhere from three to up to six, seven different um, different products that are pulled together, um, and we can handle uh, all of them in in a single product. So, um, significantly reducing your overhead uh, as as an IT department and allowing your team to focus on other potential breach vectors and other issues uh, that uh, that might come up. Um, the login options are quite substantial, so some of our um, competition will have just push-based login, for example, uh, whereas we have the ability to do uh, 
a number of different methods of login, including proximity or barcode scans, um, and, and then also, of course, fallbacks to hard tokens uh, and things like that, which for a variety of reasons, you might have to have the ability to do so. Um, and all of that can get integrated into a single sign-on that by its nature is always multi-factor off to sign in, but can be very um, easily integrated into the whole OS uh, so that when a user signs in with multi-factor authentication and their machine is online, their single sign-on is automatically signed into. We have an on-device agent, uh, both on Macs and Windows, um, that is in the toolbar um, and can just be clicked on to sign into any of your services if you have set it up for auto sign in, and that that can be switched off too. So it's not uh, it's not a default act. It's not a uh, an action that you have to have happen. Uh, it's more your option, um, and you know that's uh, through both the mobile app um, can also do single sign on for you. The SaaS web portal can, which you of course have to sign in with your SaaS app and the SASPass desktop connector, um, as well as browser extensions uh, that are available. So there's a variety of different ways you can sign in. Scan barcode is um, very uh, straightforward. As you just saw, you take your phone with the SASPass app, you scan the code, and then you get logged in. Uh, proximity is using Bluetooth. Um, it is currently limited to Macs. Uh, but we will be rolling out later in the year, hopefully, uh, the Windows version. There's uh, an extended process to, to get things um, uh, approved and uh, where updates won't roll back changes uh, with Microsoft, and, and we're working on those. And then, of course, push login you're probably familiar with uh, as an option um, because that typically is the most common one available uh, with providers like ourselves, and we of course support that as well, along with the other methods. I won't go through all the other methods, um, but U2F is, is of course the uh, standard for um, um, the, the new recommended standard from the FIDO Alliance for sign-in, and we support those hard tokens, um, both for sign-in of course to single sign-off, but also for sign-in into your computers. Um, manual entry is when you get your code from uh, an HOTP or TOTP token and manually key that in to sign in. Um, the complexity reduction is quite significant. Uh, user provisioning, deprovisioning becomes very streamlined. Um, controlling and managing user access, cutting someone off uh, is literally instantaneous. You remove the applications from uh, their permissions and they, you know, they're removed. You can, while doing that, you can, assign that instantly to yourself or your admins who are doing the action can do it uh, and assign it to themselves, sign out all other sessions from the application itself, uh, and that person has no access anymore, even if they had a client uh, that was authenticated um, as well. And, and all of those actions are uh, instantaneous when you make the changes. Um, it can eliminate the need to manage uh, hardware tokens if, if that's a method that is currently being used. Although you can, of course, integrate it. Um, in many cases, it would be very burdensome to uh, make it mandatory to use SASPass on phones because you might have a BYOD policy. People might be using their own phones. Um, but it's a very different thing if you say we're going to be moving to a stronger level of security. And you either have to carry this key fob or you can use the SASPass app, which, by the way, has all these other benefits for you personally if you would like to start using it. Um, and it, it cuts down the number of consoles you have to administer. Um, you know, at times you, you would have to remove and uh, deprovision someone from multiple uh, single uh, feature products. Um, that headache goes away, it's scalable, um, and will grow uh, with new developments in the industry, and it'll help you maintain regulatory compliance which is getting stricter and stricter um, and, and simplest once, for example, right now, that uh, it, it helps with some of the stricter requirements. Our DFARS, NIST 800-171, uh, uh, PCI DSS, um, some of the high trust requirements, 
So a number of industries are, are significantly affected by stricter regulatory compliance that already is in effect or will be coming into effect shortly. For users, um, the, the benefits are significant. Um, it makes life very uh, easy for them. Uh, it makes um, access badges and physical tokens uh, potentially redundant. Uh, it, it takes away the complexity of remembering passwords uh, and password reset headaches, both actually for your admin side as well as for the end user. Um, it makes it very easy to sign into uh, Citrix and other company applications with passwordless strong authentication um, bringing you into the future. And it allows use of computers that are not necessarily secured by, by your company and sign in into them in a way that minimizes any compromise for you, for your enterprise. Uh, and you'll see that when, when you see the demo, but the scan sign in uh, and push login, you're not entering any sensitive credentials into them. All you're doing is navigating to the sign in uh, URL. And then with the scan, you never even enter anything into it. With push login, you'll have to enter the account you want to sign into, et cetera. Um, but that's minimal and an attacker can't necessarily use that to do anything. Um, and, uh, you know, you can use the same uh, security, not just for work, but in your personal accounts, et cetera. And, and that's a big benefit for users, reducing um, the complexity of what they need to do for stronger security in their personal and, and work life. Um, the um, mobility and versatility it brings is is very significant. And what's important is it is able to handle a variety of environments, not just companies that have a ton of cloud-based SaaS products that they use, uh, but also companies that are very significantly on-premise still uh, and run their own internal infrastructure. Um, it can handle whatever you might be using today that's on-premise, but at the same time, as you might be making more and more moves into the cloud, adopting products like Salesforce, uh, Workday, et cetera, um, it, it'll grow with you to support those products as well. And it's cross-platform. You don't have to run different solutions for the Windows machines and then the Macs on your environment, which you typically have to do today because point solutions support one or the other. Um, with SaaS you basically have a single product that can handle all of them. Um, and, you know, it can support online, offline on both of those. Um, and also, uh, very importantly, it allows you to have strong uh, authentication on virtual machines, which it's difficult to do with physical tokens on VMs if you have an environment where you might have virtual machines that are being run um, that users sign into from their own laptops uh, or workstations. Um, and that, that becomes significantly easier. Um, so this is, in essence, a summary of, of the different um, functionality that SASPass can support. Um, and it's, it, it's, we believe, one of the most versatile products out there today um, with a number of features that uh, none of our competition has as well. And that's um, kind of it. Uh, I can, if you will wait, I will just do, um, that's my apologies. Um, I will just run the scan sign in video uh, very briefly. What you're seeing here, I wanted you to see the experience with both the phone and the end uh, user's machine and what happens and how their sign-in happens. And what you're seeing here is the user is navigated to their Netscaler sign-in page and needs to uh, go ahead and launch their SaaS app, which of course they have to authenticate to. And then once they have, they click on the scan sign-in and just scan that code. And what you see is their page get signed into instantaneously. And there's no entry of sensitive credentials into the target page. Um, and they can just sign right in uh, into their unified gateway. So it, it significantly cuts out risks and attack vectors for you as an organization. 
uh, when you use it. Um, and you know the proximity is essentially the same way, um, where you know. Okay, that's not opening. It's Murphy's Law of Demos, so there we go. And here, proximity is the same way, except I don't even have to scan anything. And in, in this case, of course, it didn't ask if I want to authorize this machine, because this is a paired machine that I've already marked as a safe machine to my SASPass app. Um, if it was an unsafe machine, I would have gotten a request asking if I want to authorize a request from this computer specifically. Um, and of course, that sign-in, if you notice, it, it didn't just happen with no intervention. It still required me to authenticate. Um, and, and so, you know, some concerns uh, a user might, you might have uh, might be around, you know, um, what happens if you have multiple users in the same environment. And we've built in a number of business rules into it um, that will give you the ability to uh, control that kind of access uh, and set up business rules so that end users will not um, mistakenly be signed into a colleague's machine, et cetera. So we can take questions maybe. All right. Uh, th th thanks very much uh, for the presentation and demo, Fati. Uh, mm -hmm. th I think the product is really cool. Uh, and when it when it comes to passwordless authentication, and I, I, I think it really uh, makes sense because uh, because of all the attacks which which are happening, and and uh, some of the surveys shows that uh, uh, most of the breaches uh, happens due to uh, uh, due due to uh, the passwords being hacked or breached in some case. So so passwordless authentication always helps. And 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 yeah. some of the features where uh, the proximity, uh, where where users do not do not really have to uh, uh, to do anything to just approve it from their uh, mobile app is is, is something is, is something very useful and and some verticals like like the healthcare uh, where where yep. uh, where the patient care is more important than than uh, wasting time logging in to various. URLs and, and and credentials, uh, and 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 it also helps, uh, and 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 that that's one of the best part, right? So uh, so 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 what what we are promoting uh, at Citrix as a company lately is the secure digital perimeter, uh, and and yeah. one of the uh, main and one of the main uh, uh, messaging is uh, we want to reduce the complexity of of various point solutions and and just just uh, uh, provide that simplicity of uh, 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 simplicity for for end users and and uh, and 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 the and and to improve the re, improve the quality of of the uh, login experience so that that's something which uh, SASPAS really uh, kind of supports us in that story uh, so kind of uh, quickly moving on to uh, the question and answers. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so we have a couple of questions from from the audience coming in now. Uh, so, so, uh, so okay. one of the attendees would like to know what is the authentication method uh, that would need to be configured on the net scaler uh, for SASPass to authenticate. I, I think um, we pro, uh, we support both uh, Radius and SAML. I've, I've seen a few demos from you, but but I'll let you answer. Yeah, absolutely. So depending on on um, you know what version of Netscaler you're running, uh, you'll have the option to do both SAML and Radius, or in some cases it might just be Radius only if you're on uh, an older version. Um, but uh, but on if you're on any of the the newer versions, you you will be able to use SAML auth uh, SAML based authentication and also be able to configure rules for users where certain users might have to use SASPass and others may not be required to depending on you know their level of access in your organization uh, if they qualify as admins uh, and you know by regulation for some industries they, they have to have it um, and then you know you could roll it out but what we've typically seen 
is uh, a lot of our, our customers actually end up rolling it out to the whole organization just because of the ease of use. The biggest pushback usually for rolling out strong authentication across the whole organization usually was the complexity and pushback that they would get from the employee base, um, which uh, people actually don't get it with SaaS They In fact, they, they're thankful for it. And based on some of the latest NIST guidance, um, there's a lot that can be done where extreme password complexity rules, for example, um, were demonstrated not to really increase security substantially, and that you could actually relax some of that um, and the password change requirements if you had in place strong authentication methods to complement your existing setup. Um, so all of that ends up in greater employee satisfaction, um, which hopefully results in less headaches for you, for you guys. Right. So, so uh, that, that's uh, uh, that, that's really uh, uh, that, that's really awesome, right? And and one of the best parts uh, about your solution is it already has integrations with uh, more than fifteen hundred uh, actively used SaaS applications in, in the market. So, so it, it really becomes easy for the customers to kind of quickly uh, uh, use use your turnkey solution to secure most of their uh, uh, web apps or, or uh, SaaS apps, which they, which they have in their environment. And, Absolutely, uh, and we, we we also have a, um, a very easy uh, POC process. You can just go ahead and register. We don't even require credit cards or any billing information. Um, and you have two months to go in there and um, integrate test applications or test environment uh, if you want to give it a, a dry run um, and and kind of see uh, see how it works. Um, so, you know, we've, we've tried to make that whole process as easy as possible um, and seeing it and using it and, and uh, kind of uh, playing it through uh, in person, um, we, we have found tends to be a very uh, powerful experience for, uh, for end users. All right. So, uh, so, so how, uh, how easy is it? Uh... Uh, to, to integrate, uh, 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 let, let's say the customers already have Netscaler and and uh, uh, and, and and they want to kind of uh, integrate SaaS Pass into their environment, uh, but but they are also using the Netscaler unified gateway to kind of uh, provide that single URL experience uh, for for all their uh, web apps or, or Synapse and Zen desktop applications, uh, the Citrix, uh, sorry, uh, the Microsoft yep. SharePoint. Uh, so, yep. uh, so, so does SaaS Pass provide that uh, single sign-on experience? Uh, yeah. To do all these applications. Absolutely, and and it it's in terms of integrating applications. Um, it really depends on on the application, but the Netscaler configuration, for example, um, you know, we we believe can be done on average uh, in in around 20 to 25 minutes. Um, with regard to the actual time it, it would take you to to do the configurations, uh, of course, there's prep that would need to go into it with regard to making sure employees are educated in um, you know what they need to do with regard to onboard themselves to SaaS Pass, and we do have a number of features that that make your life easier as an admin with regard to onboarding. Your employees self onboard, basically download the app themselves, um, and pair it with a verification email that you would send to their work email, um, and and they can effectively bind it to their SaaS Pass app uh, and do their their own self service onboarding um, that that you can trigger. Um, so. As long as that education and rollout of the apps has been done to the end users, the actual configuration for you um, is, is is a very short period. Uh, we've seen total switches where uh, an organization has basically moved over, first starting uh, with things like computer sign-in and their um, cloud cloud-based uh, office productivity uh, software, you know, uh, mail and um, cloud spreadsheets, uh, edit, uh, text editors, et cetera, um, in, in less than two, three days, where uh, some have done it essentially in one day, uh, where they've just moved all the apps over over the course of a weekend and 
people coming in uh, just started with the new regime um, on on the Monday, um, and and you know uh, onboarding all the apps and doing the configuration over uh, over a few hours on a weekend um, is is quite uh, quite easy and uh, it can also be done more gradually, of course, um, where you do all the configurations without actually hitting the go button um, for those apps, and then when you're ready to you can hit go for all of them as well. Right. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Fatih. And and one more int interesting point you did mention during uh, during the slides was uh, uh, the employees are also allowed to kind of uh, utilize SaaS Pass for their personal apps. Uh, so so uh, so so with uh, with with bring your own device and and. Uh, 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 m many employees using different devices and things like that. I, I think uh, uh, I, I personally do not use my laptop only for my uh, uh, office uh, work. I'll also use it for my personal work and things like that. So, uh, so, so that that's one of the uh, key highlights which which SaaS provides for the employees to kind of uh, allowing them to uh, use, use secure their personal apps also uh, for free. Yeah, I mean, once once they realize that the value it provides to them as as a normal consumer is is essentially equivalent to you know a thirty five forty dollar license fee, which is what most typical standalone password managers charge. Um, it, it really becomes something they're grateful for, it, it, and similar very much to how some of you might also have programs where you allow employees to um, to download antivirus programs. Um, that are essentially covered by your organization um, where you are doing a bit of a benefit to yourself too, of course, because uh, most infections would uh, are typically spread from people's personal machines to, um, to, to their work environment when they email a file back and forth uh, between a personal email and work or something like that um, and, and, you know, pass infections that way. Um, so, you know, this is essentially the same logic, um, except you have a, a single key that can be used for both, um, but where all information is siloed and separate, um, and that's what gives employees the confidence to use it personally, knowing that it is free for them if they leave the company, that they don't have to worry about switching to some other product or trying to find a solution again, um, that they can just kind of at least in their personal life, continue as normal uh, after leaving the company or retiring, etc. All right, interesting. Uh, so, uh, so Fatih, some uh, so, so one uh, one more question is: let let's say uh, uh, as as an enterprise with with thousands of employees and uh, uh, with with strong factor authentication being one of the uh, necessity. Uh, the IT would have invested a lot of, uh, uh, there would be a significant investment uh, uh, when it comes to hard tokens or or, or any mm -hmm. other solutions already in their environment. Yep. So, uh, so, so how does SaaS Pass kind of, uh, do, do we, do they have to completely uh, get rid of the tokens or can they integrate? No, not, not at token? all. Most, most, most of the hard tokens out there in the market today are, are uh, standards compliant um, and uh, if, if you're managing them in your current environment uh, you will typically be able to import them into SAS Pass uh, and continue benefiting from the use of them um, for you know the employees that would still need hard tokens or as a backups when you know people might uh, have their phone break or something like that or forget it um, you would be able to issue them um, essentially a, a backup hard token uh, just for the day or even issue everybody one um, that only gets enabled uh, where it gets switched to their hard token if they happen to forget their phone or something happens to it. Um, so we, we've seen that kind of scenario actually be the most common one where most of the employees will use the SaaS Pass app, but their existing hard tokens will just be brought into the system and be there as, as a backup if something happens to their phone. IT just changes the owner of the accounts for that employee from their SaaS Pass app to the hard token app, um, to, to the hard token, 
and, and that effectively allows them to uh, switch over. All right, that, that's, uh, that's very helpful, Fatih, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. So moving on, uh, so does the SAS pass have to be uh, uh, so rolled out uh, throughout the organization or, or can it be uh, rolled out to uh, on only certain departments or only certain applications where the customers choose? Um, absolutely. So, uh, SASPass uh, SAS is, is pretty granular and with a number of products out there, you can set different policies. So, Netscaler, for example, is, is quite flexible and allows you to set policy where certain users have to be authenticated with SASPass and others can continue with their normal username password or username certificate, et cetera. Um, I mean, username password and certificate um, method that they might be using now or if, if it's just username password they can continue doing so etc um, so it really varies um, depending on what you want to do things like the computer login application you can ro roll out grant um, with um, granularity down to individual users um, without having to roll it out to uh, you know require everybody um, so there's there's a similar logic to what all of you are used to today with regard to uh, groups and directories. Um, we effectively have replicated uh, those kind of um, environment uh, that that kind of management capability in SASPass, where you can require one group or one OU in, in your directory um, to use SASPass, and another one doesn't have to, uh, et cetera. So, I mean, that doesn't apply to every single application. Some applications um, don't have that ability for for us to make it that that level of granularity. Um, but uh, for most, you do have a significant amount of flexibility, and and we actually do see that we've we have a lot of customers that'll start out first with the ones that are absolutely necessary for an upcoming regulatory requirement or something like that. Um, you know, they'll have admin or uh, sensitive users and things like that that are required to use it initially, um, and then what they'll actually see once they've rolled it out to that smaller subset. Um, is that they'll get positive feedback um, and then it gives them the comfort to actually roll it out to the whole employee base or bigger and bigger groups within an organization. Great. Uh, and and uh, the SAS passes, uh, the proximity feature is, is, is quite interesting. Uh, so, so what's the uh, technology behind it? Is, is it the Bluetooth? Uh, connection working and 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 if the enterprise chooses to kind of do not want to uh, uh, choose do not want to use that feature can they kind of disable it uh, absolutely so yeah the, the 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 technology that's being used is is bluetooth um we do operate on on an assumption always however um that whatever carrier whatever technology is being used for transport so same with um, when there's a communication from your app to SASPath, that that communication is potentially compromisable. Um, and, and you know as, as well as, as I do, and all of you are probably aware of this, there is no such thing as something that is unbreakable, that is impossible to breach. It's more a matter of just how much money does the, you know, the bad guy want to spend to try and breach you. Um, and you know, if anyone ever tells you that their system is impossible to break into, uh, don't believe them. I mean, we haven't had any anyone uh, that that that's done so, but um, you know, any system can be breached. Uh, the the most important thing is if you know your encryption is somehow breached or um, the the data that's being transported is is somehow extracted. You want to most importantly make sure that it cannot be reused and used for any kind of replay attack. And, and that's the whole assumption we operate under is that at some point technology will be developed or will be around where even the encryption that we use, even though it's the best industry standard right now, um, can always potentially be breached or there might be some nation state out there that is using quantum computing to um, it, to, to essentially you know break the encryption. Um, we, we don't know that, uh, it, it may exist, um, and uh, so the assumption is if that technology was to be developed or come into existence, 
you want to make sure that the damage is minimal um, and, and is not something that, you know, opens you up uh, totally to, to an attack. All right, uh, very valid, uh, Fatih, thank you. Uh, just, just one more uh, question. I, I think we have uh, quite a few admin administrators uh, who have joined us today. Uh, so, uh, so, so how easy is it to kind of uh, uh, set up SASPAS in your, uh, uh, in your environment just, just to do a POC and, and to roll out uh, into production? Uh, uh, does it require any any kind of uh, huge downtime or a uh, lot lot of servers to be deployed? Uh, any any no. agents which have to be deployed? Um, not not really. Uh, it's it's very quick. Uh, the the agent, of course, if you um, if you want to use the computer connector features where the OS requires multi-factor authentication to sign in and and has that desktop single sign-on agent uh, installed on it, et cetera, that uh, you will have to install. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. So whatever technology you might be using to stage your machines, um, we have, uh, you know, for Windows, we have an MSI package. Um, and then uh, Max, you've got the DNG that you can use whatever staging software you're currently using to roll out to your user base. Uh, for a POC, if it's a smaller group, of course, that's even easier uh, to coordinate. You can just, uh, you know, have have them download uh, the agent and install it. If it's a number of admins, for example, that want to test it out. Um, one thing you have to make sure, if you are working in an environment that is uh, with domain join machines, you have to first do the configuration for the machines, because on domain join machines, if you just roll it out or run it normal install, it will it will configure itself fully and start looking to the SASPass cloud and instantly on your next restart um, or sign out and sign back in, it'll start enforcing the rule. And if you haven't done the configuration um, in the SASPass management console where, you know, where you registered your company and then have your own management console to, to manage for your entity, uh, if you haven't put yourself or, you know, your POC participants in it as users, um, they'll the default settings we have for all of those applications is to to have the most restrictive access from the beginning, which you can then through the management console make easier if you need to, or weaken or lessen some of the requirements um, and start you know giving rules where you can say this group of users has to use SASPass and this group of users can sign in without it, etc. Um, but you you first need to make those configurations. Uh, but the process itself is super easy. It, it's quite self-service. Uh, you basically need a SASPass app and you uh, need to uh, register on the site. You receive a verification email um, to your corporate email and you go through the verification process by clicking on the link and scanning it, um, or in some cases, just clicking it if you do it from inside your app. Um, and and that, that basically makes you the admin so the first person who registers from your entity becomes the admin um, if for some odd reason one of your uh, one of your employees may have signed up uh, inadvertently and is personally using SASPass, uh, we of course have a process where um, that can be reassigned but it's much easier of course for yourself to just directly uh, let an employee know that they need to hand over admin control um, but if necessary of course uh, you can we can remove the entity uh, from our system deleted essentially. We can't assign, uh, reassign it to anyone because we have no control on that, but we can essentially wipe the slate clean and allow you to start uh, as, as an admin. Um, and, you know, we we have people who've basically gone from registering to setting up a POC and testing it with their own machine or a few colleagues in less than an hour. It, it just depends. Um, you know how much time you have to to dedicate to it. If if you have dedicated time uh, and you don't have anything else interrupting you, you can easily get a POC going on on a couple of machines in less than an hour. All right, that that that's pretty awesome, Fatih. Uh, all and, right, and we're, so you know, we're, uh, we're very responsive to support requests. So if any of you have any questions or can't you know can't find the information. 
Uh, all the information is very modular um, inside the SASPath um, web console where you would go to the different applications and there's information at each application on how to integrate that application specifically. Um, so it, everything is inside the admin console itself. Right. All right. That, that, thanks for that, Fatih. Uh, I think that that was pretty informative. And and uh, I see a couple of attendees asking if uh, the webinar is recorded and if the slides uh, would be shared. Uh, to answer that question, yes, we will uh, share the recording with uh, all the uh, with all the attendees uh, within a day or two to your uh, registered email IDs. And uh, with that said, we are about to end today's webinar. Uh, I want to take a if, moment. If, and anyone, if anyone has questions or wants the specific slides um, or uh, inf more information on it, um, I'm reachable on, on just fk at saspass.com. Or, of course, you can also reach out to Anil uh, and we'll, we'll get you the information you need. Definitely. Uh, so, so uh, uh, please, please reach out to us over the email, uh, and, and we'll definitely uh, get back to you at the earliest. And, and thanks very much, Fatih. I, I think it was a fantastic presentation, uh, and, and the demo went great, uh, and, and great insights shared with us. Uh, and uh, thank you to everyone for joining, and thank you, Anil, for setting all of this is, this up and uh, giving us the opportunity to share. Um, how we really believe uh, NetScaler becomes an even better product uh, with, with SaaSPass integrated into it and further enhances the security you already have with NetScaler and takes it up uh, another notch. De definitely, and, and, and that's something we, uh, 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 we look out uh, uh, from our partners and, and uh, SaaSPass has been really great with us. So, so thank you for that. And uh, last but not the least, I want to thank uh, everyone who were able to attend uh, today's webinar on in this uh, Citrix City Technical Webinar Series. Uh, and, and this shall uh, conclude our broadcast for today. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you, Anil. Will you be ending the broadcast? Uh, yes. Thanks. Okay, thank you.